In the beginning, we were slaves to the violent chaos of this world. But there was one among us who rose up to lead us out of darkness. The ones who followed became the Legion of Dawn. Welcome back freelancers. Today's Anthem Law video is sponsored by EA Game Changers, and in today's Anthem episode, I want to talk about how the very first Javelin was created by Arden Vasa. The law of Arden Vasa and the first Javelin is intertwined with the law of General Helena Tarsus and the resistance she led against the Urgoth. I'm going to keep this video relatively spoiler free, however, towards the end of the video, we'll discuss the post credits cutscene. I'll give you a heads up when we go to spoiler territory. If you'd like to support this channel, channel memberships are available. Click the join button or link in the description for iPhone users. This is Marlin Games and I hope you enjoy this latest Anthem Lore episode. To understand how the first Javelin was created, we need to go back to when Arden Vasa was an apprentice of an arcanist known as Idris. According to the Cortex entry Vasa and the Runes, Arden Vasa and Idris were both enslaved by the Urgoth, specifically one named Fkark. The entry reads, Grey-eyed Idris and his apprentice, a young Arden Vasa, were won in battle by loathsome Fkark whose Urgoth temper was written daily on the hides of his servants. The beatings continued until Idris secretly planned to join the free people, for Idris knew the secret signs. Within the game we have not faced an Urgoth yet, in fact some believe that the Urgoth are just myth. Have a listen to the Urgoth Cortex entry, it reads, Urgoth are believed to be creatures that enslaved humanity for generations until they were defeated by the Legion of Dawn. There is little direct evidence to support their actual existence. Said to stand taller than a Colossus Javelin, most details about the Urgoth are taken from Legion folk tales. There has been no confirmed Urgoth sightings in centuries. Despite some claiming that the Urgoth do not exist, there are numerous references to the Urgoth and their impact on humanity. For example, humans not enslaved to the Urgoth used to live underground. The Solarium Court Cortex entry reads, In the time of the Urgoth, free humans lived underground, and with the Urgoth defeat, humans sought to live above ground, in the open. Now whilst we don't know much about the Urgoth, and it is hard to separate truth from folklore, there is one hint to why the Urgoth enslaved humanity, and it relates to a material known as Ember. Ember is a byproduct of the Anthem, the Anthem of Creation being the thing that created the world and everything in it. The Shapers used the Anthem to create this world. And so Ember is a byproduct of that, and as such is a very powerful material for technology. Have a listen to the Ember Cortex entry. It reads, A naturally occurring dangerous byproduct of the Anthem, used as a foundation for human technology. While active ember can be found throughout Bastion, it is most bountiful around the engineer city of Heliost. Legend has it that the Urgoth enslaved humanity because the Urgoth could not manipulate ember, whereas humans could. Ember is necessary to create the gateway between the human mind and the anthem, and while excessive exposure to ember can be dangerous, it is often applied to ciphers during their training. If you should find ember in the wild, it can be harvested to craft remarkable weapons and gear. So this cortex entry hints at the Urgoth enslaving humanity because we could manipulate ember and incorporate it into technology. This I believe is the beginning of creating the javelins, understanding how to use ember. There is also more evidence that the Urgoth wanted to discover how to use ember in the gateway cortex entry. If ember is the raw material emitting power, the gateway is a tool to access it, and it appears that Idris had discovered this knowledge whilst enslaved. Have a listen to the gateway entry from the Cortex. It reads, An interface that acts as a buffer between the human mind and the Anthem of Creation, making it possible for humans to channel their will into ember-based technology. Upon this discovery, he knew what he must do. 
The Urgoth, hungry to use the anthem for their own purposes, must never know that humans had discovered the buffer, the gateway they sought. He feigned ignorance to his master, yet whispered his findings to his apprentice, and they to their own kin. From settlement to settlement, and through many years, it carried until it was whispered to Vasa, who possessed the clarity to use this knowledge for the liberation of all humanity. So as you can see, it seems like Idris had discovered this gateway technology, a way to allow humans to access Ember technology. Idris passes information onto his apprentice, Arden Vasa. Pretending that they did not have this knowledge, feigning ignorance to his master as a Cortex entry read, Idris planned to escape the Urgoth. The free humans of the world used secret signs to direct other humans to their hideouts. So Idris creates a distraction by setting fire to the Urgoth's vault, and both Idris and Arden Vasa escape the Urgoth. Eventually, Idris and Vasa discovered the free people by following the secret signs. The Vasa and the Rune's Cortex entry reads, Through the canopy and over many waters they sped, seeking shelter in caves and crevices too small for Urgoth to enter. Fkark pursued them upon his foul beast, but the Rune's revealed secret plans that no Urgoth would think to go. At last, Idris and Vasa came to the haven, and upon its entrance was the declaration, All are safe within these walls. After joining the Free Humans, Vasa would eventually meet General Helena Tarsus. And at this point, Vasa is considered a master of Ember manipulation and has been well taught by Idris. Now, the details are scarce, however, the Cortex suggests that using the teachings from Idris, most likely understanding the Gateway and understanding how to manipulate Ember, Vasa was able to create the very first Javelin. The Cortex entry, Vasa and the Runes, reads. Years turned over, and Vasa followed the teachings of Idris and the Emberlings. Tarsus worked to thwart the Urgoth, freeing all in her path, relying on runes to aid their flight until that day when Vasa crafted suit of armor, plated in ember and hope. This would make General Tarsus stronger than the Urgoth, than the Ursix, than the Titan. This would be humanity's salvation. I'm not too sure what Emberlings are, it could be a group of people who studied Ember, but we can't be too sure. So to summarize, originally captured by Urgoth, Vasa learned the gateway technology and how to manipulate Ember from his teacher, Idris, allowing him to create javelins infused with Ember technology and using gateway to allow the human mind to control it. Vasa's journey doesn't actually finish there. He would go on to assist General Tarsus to recruit and train Lancers, Lancers piloting javelins that would form the Legion of Dawn and free humanity from the Urgoth. As if creating the first javelin wasn't enough, Arden Vasa has been attributed to building the Fortress of Dawn, the Arcanus Academy Velathral, the Watchtower of Arath, and the Defences of Antium, the capital and home to the Emperor. It is said that Arden Vasa passed on his knowledge to his children, one of which became the Emperor of Antium. Have a listen to the Arden Vasa Cortex entry. It reads, The Legion of Dawn divided into three. Vasa led a group to Antium. He invented Antium's fortifications and created another safe haven. Vasa continued to pass his knowledge down to his children, as he continued to make more discoveries. His children, Fortuo and Del, continued to teach their own children, and Del would be the rulers of the Antium. Del should sound familiar. Del is the last name of Dax, or her full name is Lady Adaxia Meravala Del. She is third in line for the throne of Antium. So if the history is correct, Dax is the descendant of Arden Vasa who created the very first javelin. It is almost too much to be true, and in fact the Arden Vasa Cortex entry even suggests that maybe Arden Vasa was not a single person, but a group of people. Have a listen. The feats of design and engineering attributed to Arden Vasa are too improbable to be believed. Are we to accept that one man invented the javelin while hiding in a cave somewhere in the Bastion wilderness? It seems unlikely that the same person could have designed the walls of Antium and the gardens of the academy, and yet both are attributed to Vasa. It is far more likely Arden Vasa was a group of arcanists and engineers whose work has been misattributed. 
Okay, so now I want to go into spoiler territory. If you have not finished the campaign, I recommend leaving now. So the Cortex questions the historical correctness of Arden Vasa. So much so to even say that Arden was not a single person and that Urgoths are not even real, which would debunk the very beginning of this entire story, the enslavement of Vasa and Idris by the Urgoth, likely the very catalyst to why they created the Javelins in the first place. This is why the ending of Anthem is so great. The post-credit cutscene shows a body of an Urgoth, proving that they do exist and giving credit to the creation story of Arden Vasa. If the Urgoth are real, then we must assume that they are still after Ember technology, the byproduct of the Anthem, a powerful material that can be used in technology. If I was to guess about future updates and DLCs in Anthem, it would be about the Urgoth trying to access Ember technology. And with that, that concludes this latest Anthem Lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word Ember, the material that started the enslavement of humanity by the Urgoth. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.